Hey guys, it's Troy with yet another pen video. Wanted to talk to you about Eversharp. I talked to you a little bit about the wall Eversharp that I'm giving away. You still have time to enter the contest, by the way, to win this wall Eversharp 1940s vintage fountain pen. Uh, but that's not the pen I'm here to talk about. I'm here to talk about a later incarnation of the Eversharp pen company, which is this. This is the Big E. One of the interesting things about pens is some of the history. Uh, the Eversharp Pen Company started, its genesis was right around 1913. By about 1915 or so, uh, the guy who started that particular company uh, ended up going into business together with the folks from the uh, Wall Adding Machine Company to become Wall Eversharp. And they did fairly well all the way up until about 1957 or so when Parker bought them out. Parker, one of the big three pen manufacturing companies in the United States. So they started to change things a little bit, started to Parkerize things, to coin a phrase there. Uh, so Parker um, started to release in uh, the early 60s or so some pens um, that were still under the Eversharp name, yet were actually Parker's. This is one of them. The first one uh, was the 10,000 word pen. I'll put up a link so you can see what one of those looks like. Uh, but uh, this was their second attempt um, at having an economical, uh, not a lever filler, now going to cartridge converters uh, under the Eversharp name. So this was called the Big E. Uh, it came in several colors, dark blue among them, which this is. And at the top, you've got a nice little silver top. That's a little concave there uh, with a nothing fancy clip, but with an E on there. I'll try to show you a better picture of that later. And you got a little cap band. You can't really see it well here under the camera, but I did give you a, I will give you a close-up shot. Uh, it does say ever sharp engraved into the barrel right there. Just a silver ring there and a tapered down barrel to another concave uh, little thing on the tip. So, like I said, it is a cartridge converter pen that came out right around 1961 or so, and they called it the Big E. It was offered in several different nibs. Um, so uh, you can see right here, you should be able to unscrew that nib. And it is kind of the forerunner uh, to like the, the 45 or similar to the 45, the Parker 45. Um, but the, uh, the nib collar was in one piece, a section that was the same color, uh, a clip. The clip was supposedly fairly similar to what they did for the 10,000 pen. But you should be able to get these in like an extra fine, fine, medium, and broad. So... Um, the seller said that this was a broad. I'll be honest with you, it writes more like a medium in my personal experience so far. Uh, but let's go ahead and pull this off. You can tell the Parker influence uh, because this is a Parker modern converter that I put in here. It did actually come with an old converter. And uh, quite honestly, at first it was kind of stuck. And then I got it to move some finally. Uh, but I decided, yeah, let's not go ahead and use that. I'll just sort of set that aside. And I pulled out of a Parker Vector, which is one of their modern pens, slide it in here and see how it works. He did also include a vintage cartridge, one of those long tapered cartridges. It's no longer in use. You can tell there's been a lot of ink evaporation out of that. Uh, but it's probably from the 1960s or so. I've had some others uh, that were ink evaporated, some a whole lot worse than this one even. Uh, but I decided not to go ahead and puncture that or try to use it. But uh, essentially this is a Parker being issued under the Eversharp name. It does have a, a steel nib and it's actually not a bad nib at all. I'll give you a close-up shot of that nib. Uh, in this particular nib, um, it it needed just a hair, a little bit of smoothing. I mean, it wrote very well when I first had it, and I just took about 20 seconds with micro mesh. That's all I had to spend on it, and boom, booyah! It started to write very, very well. So you can see it's a nice little feed there, kind of hard to see, but uh, very typical of semi-hooded nibs like that. All right, so how does this baby perform? Well, let us show you. 
how does a two dollar and ninety eight cent pen from nineteen sixty one handle well the ever sharp big e Circa 1961 is when they started producing them, and I don't have an end of the production run um, that I could find. I did find some information on this particular pen. I'll put some links for it uh, so that you can look at it for yourself, as well as some history of the Eversharp Pen Company together with Parker. Uh, but this probably was 1961, 62, 63, anywhere in there. So this one, um, it writes more like a medium. How I've come accustomed to having a medium nib write. Um, even though the uh, seller did say that it was a broad nib. It actually, right now, writes very smooth and very reliably. I've been happy with it since I got it and started playing with it. Um, I did put in some Papier Plume Forget-Me-Not Blue, which I'm surprised I didn't call Blue, <laughs> considering Papier Plume from Nolens. So, I'm the kind of guy, I kind of like pens that are a little off the beaten path. i be honest with you, this is the first big E that I've even really seen or managed to touch and acquire. It wasn't tremendously expensive. I did do a little searching to see if I could find some others, and some um, eBay options did pop up. But this one has been nicely restored. Um, I'm assuming it's been nicely polished up by the seller. Um, and he is a pen restorer. I'll tell you what, I'll even put a link to his Etsy store because I did find this on Etsy rather than off from eBay. And, uh, you know, it, he was very responsive in our communication, so, you know, I probably would buy from him again and I'll be checking out his stock from time to time to add to my collection. So, you know, not a bad addition. I, I'm pretty fairly happy uh, with this particular pen. I was surprised it wrote as well as it did. And uh, it's not a bad little pen to have in the collection. I mean, it's a low-end pen. Like I said, 1961 or so for $2.98, which is still an appreciable amount of money uh, back in that day. Um, but still, no, not a cheap pen, uh, not a overly expensive pen. It was right at the affordability point for an awful lot of people to be able to purchase and carry with them. So there you go. The Big E Pen by Parker slash Eversharp from the early 1960s. A decent addition to my collection. I'll be happy with it and be carrying it today as my pen of the day.